Okay, name's Joe Hoy. I started here in 1976. Worked uh, initial uh, place was Naval Systems Group, which I think is no longer here. And that was part of IPS. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, what was your first assignment? It was a uh, project called Bulldog, and basically I was a hardware engineer at the time, so I was designing some circuit boards and actually started working with uh, microprocessors. They were just out Intel 8080, and that was my initial job to get the board up and running mm -hmm. for the program. Okay. Um, how did you feel about your first project? I actually liked it very much. It's, of course, it was my first experience out of school, so I actually had no prior experience in the engineering area. Uh, the group I worked for, uh, my unit manager basically said it's a nice company to work for because it's like a, comp a small company within the big company. And there was maybe 15 people in the group. We had system engineers, hardware engineers, test engineers. And it was, it was like a little company inside a, uh, a rather large one. Mm -hmm. Did you have a mentor or a lead engineer or something that kind of showed you the ropes? Yes. My uh, first unit manager was um, Dave Jack. Mm -hmm. And he was here for a number of years. He actually used to be a teacher in high school, so he was very good at, you know, bringing me along and getting me up to speed on exactly what I had to do. Now, you're rather unique in that you started as a really good hardware engineer and then went into software. Can you relate that progression in your career? All right, even though I was a hardware engineer, I did do a lot of the firmware development in, at the assembly level, so I, I sort of felt I was doing both hardware and software at the same time. And I actually did that for almost 15 years. And at that point in time, the hardware, you had pretty much two directions to go into, into the FPGA design or off-the-shelf type of processing. And at that point in time, they needed software engineers, so I just jumped ship and became a software engineer. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was doing exactly the same thing, but I was just in a different group. Okay. Can you give us a uh, survey of the projects that you worked on? Okay, initially, again, the group I was in was Bulldog, and for the first, I believe, 10 or 15 years I worked within that group. Uh, there was a Bulldog, uh, Flycoist, of course, you know, Centerboard. Uh, I worked on some IRD programs that actually didn't go too far, but it was for two or three years I worked on that. So that was my first 15 years. I did some work in some other groups. I think the job was Pachinko. That was a nice little hardware job that went on for about a year. At that point in time, I switched to software, and my first job in software was Nerve Trunk. That was a five-year program, which I guess you know all about also. After that, I worked actually on STI upstairs in the, uh, I guess it was the InfoSec area. I was on that, working for about four or five years before I came back to the IPS area and I worked on, I guess it was Surfer and eventually Kahuna. And now I'm actually in working on Spiral 2. So how do you feel about your career? Well, it's been interesting. I mean, I always enjoyed working with the people and it was always a constantly changing group so it was you know it was always interesting and i you know really enjoyed it um we'll talk about your co-workers what was it like i normally got along with almost everyone i, I worked with uh i always had i guess very good luck with my managers very nice guys to work for uh, a lot of really smart people when i first started here of course i'm out of college i you know didn't know anything so i thought they were all geniuses <laughs> but as the years went by i seemed to kind of even up with as far as knowledge concerned was but i really enjoyed working with all the people you know throughout the years why did you stay why did i stay uh actually i was going to leave a couple times but they kept on giving me rather good incentives by good reviews and rather large increases. So 
I felt there was no reason to, no, no reason to leave as long as I was enjoying myself. You mentioned your managers, supervisors. Yes. What was it like with them? Again, my first manager, I probably since I was new, I really liked him a lot. That was Dave Jack. And then I moved on to um, Jerry Curtis. He was a hardware engineer, and he was also very, very nice, easy to work for. For a while there, I worked for um, Art Simons, even though I was in a completely different area. So we sort of, he was my manager, but he had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and I moved on to, uh, let me see, it was uh, Mike Nolan, when I was on STI, another nice guy, very technical. I pretty much like the guys that are very technical, the manager types. Now recently, it's changed a little bit. The managers aren't so technical. They're sort of, you know, part of the management type. But even there, I've, I've had a few guys. Tom Bukowski, I just, was my current manager, and he's, you know, a very nice guy. Easy to work with. Have you felt that RCA and your supervisors valued what you did? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I always got good reviews, and, you know, they told me a number of times I was appreciated. Okay. We've heard, uh, Jim, can you just pause for a second? Because this, I guess, drilling is showing up on the mic. And it sounds <laughs> like something in a world, war, war of the worlds. So Actually, that's been pretty good this week. I mean, last week was really bad. <laughs> oh, this is the second one. Yeah, yeah, they've been, it's been, it's been terrible. You can't win for losing. <laughs> I wonder why they started. All right, we should go, Wallace. We all right? <laughs> all right, we'll give it a shot anyway. So let's talk about the workplace. What was the environment like to you? I was very friendly. Uh, you know, again, we had, um, you know, different different sporting events. We had, you know, softball teams. Actually, had, I, was a, I actually ran for a number of years. We actually had a uh, running team run on different races. It was, it was rather nice, you know. You had the... Uh, uh, CAA and you know different activities, the Christmas parties and the kiddies parties, like you know very enjoyable. The term in previous interviews, the RCA family, has come up. Does that mean anything to you? Well, sure. A lot of people here felt you know, feel that things have changed a little bit here, um, and again, I think back then it was. The structure of the company is a little bit different. Again, it was you're your, your like a small group working together as opposed to now it's your, of course, multiple sections. So I felt like it was more of a family because you worked with the same people for a number of years. But I don't think it's really changed all that much. Okay. So would you can still, still consider it a family? <laughs> well, of course, over the years, most of the people I've worked with have retired, and there's a lot of new faces, but I still think it's sort of a family. I, I, I enjoy working with the people. Okay. Okay. Um, what's your opinion of the assessment of RCA back then in the industry? How was it looked on? Well, I, I know when I first started, the first thing I thought of was, you know, the, the TV, RCA TV, you know, it was always a top brand. And I, I know back then, when I first started, it was, they still had uh, the broadcasting section here and, and, you know, it was a top of the line company. I think back then there might have been, I think it was like 3,000 people working here. Yeah. yeah. So, did you spend a lot of time with your co-workers outside of work? Uh, yeah, occasionally. Christmas parties, you know, after, after work hours and Friday nights, you know, going out. Yeah. And then again, on some of the, you know, like I said, different occasions, you know. There is a, uh, an idea that maybe RCA even changed South Jersey. Do you have any opinions in that area? Uh, not really, no. Okay. I know Campbell Soup had a big impact, but mm -hmm. maybe RCA also had it, yeah. Okay. What was the best thing about working for RCA? 
again, I have to go back to what my original manager said. It was like working for a small company inside, and you had the benefits of a big company working for her, but working for a small company. Okay. And I agree. I enjoyed working on the projects and the challenge of getting it done on time, which is pretty much what we did for, for the most part. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed that. Okay. How do the customers look at us? I believe they were very happy. The uh, again, the initial program I worked on, Bulldog, we had a um, production type development, and it was actually installed, uh, you know, around the world, thirty some sites. So I think they were very happy with that. Okay. What was the worst part about working for RCA? The occasional overtime. <laughs> Yeah, you know, sometimes you really had to put some hours in, mm -hmm. but, you know, that was just part of the job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you actually feel that you were part of a team? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yes, with the, uh, between the system engineers and, the, you know, the hardware engineers, yeah, we were definitely a team. We all came in, got the job done. Okay. Um. In your neighborhood, did you know other people who worked for RCA? When I first started here, my uh, neighbor, actually my next door neighbor, actually worked here for a number of years, 30 years or so. He worked over in the factory in 17 building. Other than that, no, I, I really knew no one else. Okay. Okay. Um, so how did RCA affect where you lived? Or did they? Not really, no. I uh, originally grew up in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. And when I got the job here, it was, uh, you know, not much of a drive. And I ended up buying a house down the shore, and I would commute there a lot over the years. I'm actually living in Springfield, Pennsylvania right now. Did you feel you had all the resources you need needed to do your job? I believe so. Again, back then, RCA, you, you know, you didn't have your workstations, you didn't have any of that stuff, but I believe, yeah, it was, you know, it was provided by the management, yep, had all the resources. Okay. Um, everybody talks about when GE took over RCA. Did you notice any specific changes, any any good or bad influences there? Well, as I recall, the time G took us over, they had just come through some kind of violation phase where they did some kind of government, I don't know what it was, and the first thing we had to do was go through a lot of ethical training. So we learned how not to cheat, and I thought it was rather odd that as RCA, we never had an issue there, so that was a little... A little strange to start. <laughs> and there was also, I guess, uh, I think back in 86, there was a layoff right between the transition of RCA to GE, and I know that didn't go over too well with some of the people. Mm -hmm. But once we got going, it was, you know, it was, it was fine. Okay. So do you see yourself in a leadership position now? Not really, no. I was never good, good at being a manager. <laughs> I was always too tough on people, so uh -huh. I stuck with the uh, technical side, engineering. Okay. Yeah, yeah I <laughs> did that for a little bit, but yeah, I was a little too... Uh, Do any of the junior year engineers come to you? For oh, yeah, I, I help them out, yes, definitely, oh, yes, okay. yes. But as far so as being... You're a technical leadership. I'm a technical leadership, that's correct, okay. yes. How does that go? Oh, well, that's, that's fine. And, of course, recently, you know, things are changing so much. It's almost so much you can help the younger guys since it's uh, they can help me more than I can help them in some of the technology coming out. But for the most part, when you need to get someone up to speed on something, yeah, very helpful. To, to be an engineer, you have to keep up with technology. That's Did correct. Did RCA yeah. help with that at all? Yeah, as I recall, they had a lot of after-hour training courses. Uh, I remember one of the first courses I took was in the um, 
it was a microprocessor back then. It was the, uh, I think, RCA Cosmac or something like that. And and there was, it was, and then I took different courses, and I think it was Ada and C, C and type things. So yeah, they provided after hour courses. So, up to now, I mean, you're still here, and you're still one of the, you know, recognized contributors here, uh, but up to now, how would you summarize the trip? You mean between, before... Well, RCA. Well, RCA, again... Just a job? If... Uh, <laughs> I'm one of the few people that actually think it's a job as opposed to a career. I always tell that to my managers, yeah, it's just a job to me, but I guess it's it's a career. And I, with RCA, you know, since it was my first job coming out of school, very impressed with the people and the technology I was learning. As, as years went by, different companies, it's, I guess it became more of a job, yeah. Mm -hmm. But. How do you think? RCA stacked up against the other companies as far as just a job? I would say it's about even, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so what kind of impressions should we leave in the history book about this thing called RCA? Well, again, I guess it was a very, um, I know, very technical type company. They had some really smart people working here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, it's a, you could say a family type atmosphere. And it was always nice. And I guess like most people, I was, I wasn't all that happy when G took over. You know, I'd rather have RCA continue, but mm -hmm. that's just the way it is. So, but that's life, yeah. right? Okay. All right, do you have anything else that comes to mind? Any events, stories, or anything else that uh, that you want to talk about, about RCA? Again, over the years, things have changed a lot. And I remember when I first started here, I, it was back in 76. You used, to, you used to have a freight train still running on, on Delaware Street. That was always interesting. As you pulled out of the parking lot, you had to kind of watch out for an occasional freight train. <laughs> And the other interesting thing was uh, Campbell Soup was right around the corner. And in the fall, I don't know if you remember this, they would bring the, the tomato trucks to the oh, company yes. and, and the tomatoes would fall off. And within a week or so, the streets would be completely red with tomatoes. It was the most odd thing I've ever seen. <laughs> tomatoes everywhere. <laughs> I kind of remember that much about you know, RCA and Campbell Soup. Yeah. Did you ever go off campus to eat or anything at lunchtime with any of your buddies? Or? Uh, sure, there's a number of places. I don't know if they're still open. I don't even remember their names anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, different areas around here, yeah. Okay. What about the, uh, the parties? The Christmas parties were nice. I didn't really intend all that many. Uh, the kiddie parties I enjoyed a lot, bringing the kids over, my nieces and nephews. I, I really enjoy those a lot, yeah. Okay. And a lot of retirements, so were nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 